You know, I have been the host of this show for just seven months, but it feels like I've come to you on countless weekends already talking about one deadly mass shooting after another. Buffalo and Uvalde happened in the first month of our show, May. And then this past week, when many were preparing to gather with family and friends for the Thanksgiving holiday, yet another mass shooting before the victims from the last one were even laid to rest. On Tuesday, a shooter opened fire at a Walmart in Chesapeake, Virginia, killing six people and injuring at least six more. The shooter, who took his own life at the scene, was a longtime Walmart employee. This tragedy is further evidence of America's gun violence epidemic. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been more than 600 mass shootings in 2022 so far. The organization considers mass shootings as having four or more victims injured or killed, not including the gunmen. This is the third straight year with more than 600 mass shootings. But it's not just the guns that are the problem, y'all. It's the hatred that is spread before the trigger is even pulled. Online extremism played a part in some of the nation's most horrific mass shootings in cities like Buffalo and El Paso. We have a recent report from the New York Times, and it found that an uptick in right-wing protesters openly carrying firearms at demonstrations against election centers, at demonstrations at Pride events, at, at, at Juneteenth celebrations, local libraries, and abortion rights demonstrations across our country. And this hatred is not just limited to the dark corners of the Internet. While we're still awaiting an update on the motive of a suspected shooter who killed five people at the LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs last week, and I say suspected, but I do believe he pulled the trigger, some of the nation's most prominent right-wing influencers and even members of Congress have singled out LGBTQ Americans for attacks, pushing the lie that the community is grooming children to perpetuate a so-called agenda. The accounts on your screen right now these are just a few examples combined. These accounts have more than 9 million followers. These attacks have only continued. Even as LGBTQ plus people in Colorado Springs and beyond mourn friends and family killed in the Club Q attack. Joining me now is one of the bartenders at Club Q and a survivor of the shooting, Michael Anderson. Michael, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time and your willingness to chat. You know, today marks one week since the shooting. And I'm really interested in how you and have, have, how the community has been coping. Do you all feel safe? Um, I can tell you personally on, on one front, um, I do spend a lot of time with my, my family there, you know, but it's, it's found best to, that we stick together, hang out together, talk it out together. Uh, it's really like group therapy, I feel like. So that's been really helpful, but I will say going out in public, we are a little, a little concerned. I mean, little things that didn't bother us before are now looking like warning signs and it just gets a little concerning. Um, so that's something we're dealing with. You know, uh, a number of my uh, LGBTQ plus friends have often talked to me about how historically sacred bars like Club, Club Q are to the community because, you know, chosen families are formed in spaces like these, movements are organized in these spaces. So has this attack changed any of that for you? Uh, 100%. Um, I, I was just at uh, Club Q um, yesterday for the first time since the uh, attack happens. And it's a beautiful memorial on the front of the club, but it's just heartbreaking that our safe, our safe space is now a memorial instead of that, a safe space. Um, I would used to go to work to see my friends, Daniel and Derek, and work alongside them and see their faces and talk to them. And now the only place I can see their face is on the side of Club Q. Mm. You know, Michael, it strikes me that when tragedies such as this happen, unspeakable tragedies, there are multiple responses that communities can have. Some people decide to organize um, in their mourning and in their grief. Some people, it, it, their response is anger. Some people, their response is drawing in. What has the response from Colorado Springs residents been like? And then how are people, are, are people angry? <clears throat> um. I, I will say everything you just mentioned is a part of this this healing and acceptance process. It's all of those feelings, but eventually, at some point, it turns to anger. It turns to rage at our our country, at our government's lack of ability to value human lives more than they value 
uh, gun rights that our founders never intended us to have, uh, owning an assault weapon on the streets of America. That's that's not what they intended when they wrote that we have a right to protect ourselves. I agree with you. You know, Republicans are set to take over the House in January. Uh, I think we talk about the need for meaningful gun safety reform. I don't I think it's less likely we will see that in the next two years. It's not impossible, but it is less likely given the people that are in power in the House. So what is your message to lawmakers who are standing in the way of progress <clears throat> for gun reform in this country? 100 percent. Um, I've had a lot of time to, to think about this in the last week, um, but I, I appreciate you having me on your platform. Um, you know, I do appreciate every every cause that you bring to light because they're all important. Um, but I do want to have a chance to speak directly to our Republican legislators and our government. Um, if they're listening, I want them to hear me because their denial of our reality that we are going through, children in schools, LGBT people in clubs, Christians in churches, their denial of, the denial of that reality is not a policy proposal. I understand how important it is that we have a right to defend ourselves and protect ourselves. I, I study political science and constitutional law, and I get that. That's a very sacred right in our constitution. But what we don't get and what we don't understand, frankly, is how they continue to line their pockets with that dark NRA money, refusing to make these common sense reform changes to our policies, and they're continuing to allow people to die while they do nothing. Um, the, the, we, you and I both want common sense reform. Um, mm -hmm. Gallup polls just earlier from this year, 57% of Americans support stricter gun laws. 83% of Americans support red flag laws. 50% of Americans support a national assault weapons ban, something we've already had in the past. But unfortunately, the Republican Party allowed that ban to expire under President Bush in 2004, and they are on the wrong side of this issue. I mean, Americans mm -hmm. want to feel safer. Uh, LGBT people want to feel safer. You know, I want to be able to go to the store and not be afraid that when I hear a balloon pop, someone's coming in with a gun and going to rush into Walmart, rush into uh, Club Q, rush into anywhere. Um, I, I really want to challenge the Republican uh, legislators to bring something to the table because all they do is deny, 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 and they stand in the corner and they offer empty thoughts and prayers and do nothing. If if they tr Michael. truly value, yes, ma'am. Uh, Michael, I was just going to say, you you know, uh, it's not Sunday, but I believe you have preached a word here, and I really hope <laughs> that uh, you have, and I really hope that folks across the country are listening, and some elected officials are listening, because you are absolutely right. I promise you, this is not going to be the last conversation you and I have, because you had something to say today. So I'm so happy that you came to join us, and I'm so happy you brought a word because we needed one. That's right. Simone, you always have something to say, and I'm glad to be a part of that today. Thank you so much. Michael Anderson, we appreciate your time. I'm so sorry for what you and the community in Colorado Springs has experienced, and I'm so grateful for your voice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time and your platform. Thank you.